Hey there everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and today we're going to talk about how to simplify and centralize access to your web applications. So, you know, you may have in a, in a certain organization, you may have lots of different web applications, and some of these are what we're going to consider uh, like classic applications. So I'll say classic or maybe like custom, custom apps. Uh, these, you know, there's things like, let's say, you know, SAP ERP, for example, um, or maybe like Oracle. Um, so, and the, these types of applications tend to live on-prem, so I'll put on-prem here, or maybe like in a private cloud. So I'll just put, you know, private cloud here, all right? And when a user, I'm going to draw like a user right out here, uh, when a user goes to access these applications, the authentication mechanism, that kind of thing, all the technology, it's going to be things like, you know, Kerberos or maybe like NTLM, um, maybe header-based auth, so I'll put, you know, header, header-based authentication, that kind of stuff. All right, so with that, each, you know, the user is going to have to uh, log in and, you know, password, username, password, all that stuff, uh, multiple different times to get to these, you know, these different classic custom applications that are on-prem or maybe in like a private cloud. Um, so you have to have, you know, the administrator has to have different identity stores, different access policies for each of these things. Um, and so it can be kind of a, you know, the, the administrators have that burden of keeping up with all that stuff. But as an organization, in addition to those, you also have uh, more modern applications that are maybe like, you know, SaaS-based, uh, you know, public cloud. I'll put that in the public cloud, of course. Uh, you, may, you may also have like some, you know, native cloud. I'll put, you know, native cloud uh, apps. And so I'll do that as well. And then these tend to use things uh, like uh, SAML and, you know, maybe OIDC with some, uh, with some OAuth thrown in there. So that's the OpenID Connect or an, an open authorization. Um, and then on these, <clears throat> you also have an identity provider. So in the case of SAML, you would have an identity provider and a service provider. So let's say the identity provider, uh, I'm going to put it over here, um, Azure, Azure Active Directory or AAD, and I'm going to put that, that's a cloud-based, uh, I'll put that's the identity as a service provider there, right? So with, so come back to these users, and the users are having to log in here, username and password, whatever, certain authentication capabilities, and then over here there's SAML, there's OID, OIDC with OAuth, whatever, you know, uh, uh, authenticating up here, uh, but, you know, that, that provides, or that generates a lot of, uh, you know, uh, frustration for users, for administrators alike, to be able to handle and simplify all this. How do you simplify and centralize all this? Well, I'm going to put an APM right here in the middle. And so this is Big IP APM. And so APM um, can, uh, can take, you know, the, the, the simplification and the centralization of this access to all these different applications. So um, rather than having identity stores up here with access policies up here, another identity store access policy down here, APM can, um, you know, can centralize all that and can even have uh, what we'll call context-aware policies based on a lot of different parameters from uh, maybe like time of day to location to endpoint security checks on the, on the user's uh, you know, machine, all of that kind of stuff. So now the user can you know, work through APM to then gain access, and APM does a lot of the, uh, you know, the heavy lifting, as it were. So, um, so there, there's a, uh, a capability in APM called, uh, and I'll just put it right here, AGC, that's the Advanced Guided Configuration, and in version 15 of APM, AGC allows you to set up and integrate uh, the Microsoft Azure Active Directory uh, right here in this guided configuration, right on the APM. Uh, so you can onboard these custom applications, these classic applications, right here in the console of APM. And you can onboard these so that Azure Active Directory, the cloud-based identity you know, uh, service, um, can be used for your users to then gain access to these classic applications that may not otherwise be able to, you know, um, transition to a, a public cloud environment. 
Um, and so, so you can do this right from the um, advanced guided configuration feature of APM. And then now in version 16 of APM, uh, there's a new feature called simplified guided configuration. And this provides step-by-step -step guidance to onboard like SAP, ERP, um, Oracle PeopleSoft. So you can, you can just step right through this simplified guide to get these, these classic, these custom applications onboarded uh, you know, into Azure Active Directory and APM. So it just really simplifies things for the administrator. And then suddenly the user, of course, sees the benefit of that. Uh, I've seen statistics up to like 75% time and cost savings from the administrative side uh, to get these things onboarded into Azure Active Directory and then APM by using this step-by-step -step simplified guided configuration. Um, so then at the end of all of this, like if a user needed to access one of these classic custom applications um, that uses, let's say, you know, Kerberos, for example, then they're, they're still going to use the, uh, the more modern technology of SAML um, and have the capability or the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the benefit of single sign-on um, as they interact here with APM. And then APM, uh, you know, will take the SAML assertion that's generated through the whole SAML process. It'll take the SAML assertion and it will translate the data out of the SAML assertion that it needs to in order to create the appropriate Kerberos or header-based or into whatever it is, um, authentication you know, details that these apps are looking for ultimately. Uh, but from the user's perspective, they can still have the benefit of the single sign-on, right? And that all happens here. The magic of the translation happens right here at, uh, at the APM. Um, you can also have, uh, you know, the administrative side, the organizational side, if you want to offer like multi-factor authentication for increased security, those kinds of things, then you can do that as well here at APM. So, you know, between, between the, uh, you know, the, the beauty and the, the simplicity of the advanced guided configuration from, a, you know, from an administrative standpoint, along with that simplified guided configuration uh, now in version 16, you can take these classic custom applications that live on-prem, that live in the private cloud, that will probably stay on-prem and stay in the private cloud for the foreseeable future, um, because you know a lot of the uh, a lot of the application workloads that exist here um, are just not ever going to be able to migrate to the public cloud. Anyway, you can take all of that and you can bring you can bring the modern features of like SAML. You can bring the modern features of you know, cloud-based identity service into the capabilities of these applications. And, and so again, from your end user perspective, now they're logging in one time, it's that single sign-on, and they have access to everything, but it's done here through APM uh, using Azure Active Directory as the identity uh, service provider. So uh, anyway, so get out there, check out all these features, simplify your life, and, uh, and everyone will be, uh, be the better for it, right? So I hope you've enjoyed this Lightboard lesson video with us today. Hey, if you like this thing, you can click up here on our DevCentral logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you guys out there in the community.